Hi, I want to talk to you about something today. I want to talk to you about sales. Now, there's a lot of people online that are doing lead generation, we're talking about lead generation, and it is something that we do and talk about a lot. But without sales, lead generation is for nothing. So if you can generate all the leads in the world, but if you can't actually convert them into your program, then you may as well be trying to fill up a bucket of water with a sieve. So I recently took one of our sales calls. Now it's not something I do normally. There's a reason that Steph is in charge of sales and I'm in charge of marketing it. It's because basically I suck at sales. She's a natural at it. But she was on a flight, so I stepped up and I jumped on this sales call. And needless to say, I did not land the prospect, <laughs> even though they were a perfect fit for our program. So why was that? Well, when I went back and analyzed my sales call and what I had been doing, I had made one key mistake and I want to talk to you about that today. So there's many different parts of the sales call and they're all very important. And perhaps one of the most important parts is the very beginning of a sales call when you start to dig. So you start to dig for your client's pain, for their problems, for their fears, their frustrations, but most importantly, for what they think is blocking their progress, for what they think is getting in the way of them having their success. And the reason that you need to dig for this is so that one, you can see if you're a perfect fit for them, okay? But two, so that you can later on use that information to show them why you're a perfect fit for them. Now, I know that it can be a bit confronting asking people quite personal questions, but if you don't do it, then you're gonna dramatically decrease your chance of getting clients into your business. So you need to dig. And here's the thing about digging. Most people actually welcome it. You know, most people love, they love talking about themselves and a lot of uh, entrepreneurs don't have people in their lives that get them. They don't have people in their lives that understand them. And so they often don't talk about their pains, their frustrations, they're often ashamed of things, the fears, you know, they're putting up this bravado, everyone's doubting them. So they're having to pretend to be successful when they're not. So to be able to actually have to be able to sit down and talk to someone and to be able to share their pains, most of them find it to be an amazing relief. So don't worry about digging. You know, you, most of the time you're not going to offend them. You're actually going to give them a release and you're going to give them some clarity on what really is their problem. Okay, so the beginning of the sales call, you're doing your digging, you're asking their pains for what their goals are, for their desires, and most importantly, for what they think is blocking their success. Then once you have that information, you have a job. Now, firstly, if you think that they're not a perfect fit for you, or more importantly, that you're not a perfect fit for them, that your service or product cannot help them, it's your job now to say that and to send them on their way or to point them towards someone who can help them. However, if you know in your heart that your product or service can help them, now it's your job to show them that. It's your job to let them see that. Now, in your head, your product or service is three-dimensional. It's full color. You know it, you see it, you can see the link, you can see how you can help them. But you need to get into their head. In their head, all they have about your product or service is white noise. Okay, they don't know anything about it. They don't know how it's going to help them. They don't know if it's going to be their pains, frustrations. They've probably been in um, things before, courses and stuff where they've been burned, where they haven't been helped. So now you need to take that information you've got at the beginning and you need to show it to them in such a way that they can see that you are the answer to their problem. Now, I don't know if you've seen, if you're a Harry Potter fan like me, but in one of the Harry Potter movies, there's the Bogart which comes out of the which comes out of the cupboard, out of the cl uh, the closet, right? And they're all there. And when it comes out, it shows them their greatest fear. Now, I want you to imagine that it. What if instead of it, when it jumped out of the cupboard, what if them seeing their greatest fear, what they actually saw was their greatest problem, okay? And a solution to their greatest problem. Now, I want you and your product to be the bogart in the cupboard, okay? And so when you jump out in front of the client, you're going to tell them about your product in such a way that it's showing them that it's the answer to their greatest pains and their problems and their fears, and it's the solution to the blocks that they're currently having that are stopping their success. So the way you describe your product or service to each prospect will be slightly different because you're gonna be bending it in such a way that it's showing them how it's going to help them with what they think is their pains and problems and frustrations. Now, we know that what they think is their pains, frustrations, frustrations are 
often emotional attachments to things. And when it comes down to logical, strategic things, it's normally a number of things that we can help them with that is going to help them solve their problems. But we can't just tell them that because that's not what they're seeing in their head. We have to show it them to it such a way that they get it, that they can see it. So you don't want to talk about the features of your product. You don't want to go on about the modules or the bonuses. You want to talk about the benefits of your product and the benefits of the benefit. And you want to tie that back in to what they told you in the beginning is their pains, frustrations, dreams, desires, blocks, things like that. Okay. So I hope that helps you. If you imagine the bug out when you jump out that you've got to make your product be moldable. You've got to be able to mold it and think about it in such a way that you can mold it into what they need. Now, I'm not saying you're going to manipulate them. I'm not saying that you're going to lie to them. You should only do this if you know in the heart that you can help them. But this is how you get them to see that you're the perfect fit for them. Okay, I hope you got something out of that. I will see you on the next video.